and I love you too. I was first exposed to the arts, literally, on a night when I was standing in front of a room full of strangers, stark naked and terrified. Seriously. On a whim, I'd answered an ad seeking life drawing models for classes at a local art gallery. The idea of modeling undraped sounded completely insane, so of course I wanted to do it. <laughs> the experience was life changing. From the moment I took my first pose, I connected deeply with art and those who were creating it. And in that moment, I knew I wanted to be of service to the arts for a long time to come. Because I could hold crazy poses for long stretches, and I worked hard, I modeled extensively throughout the San Francisco Bay Area where I lived back then. For the next 25 plus years, I was a part of hundreds of art classes and lectures, and I established relationships with hundreds of artists and art teachers. Eventually, I was rec recruited to join our local arts commission. And from then on, supporting the arts in all formats, fine art, performing arts, sculpture, music, film, has been a major focus of my life. As an arts commissioner in two cities and a board member of several organizations that fund and support the arts, I've had a front row view of art's ability to uplift and heal, to educate young people, to benefit the community's economy, and to connect diverse individuals and groups. Communities that have a vibrant, active arts culture, as we do in St. George, Utah, <laughs> where I live now, bring people together in exciting ways. My fellow board members and I, from our arts organizations, constantly see families, couples, singles, children, all coming out to celebrate and engage with the sculptures we install each year. Art also has the ability to educate young people. Each spring, we bring fourth graders downtown where the majority of our sculptures are installed. And we give them a lesson in how bronze statues are made. Then we take them on a walking tour of the outdoor sculpture gallery. They're so amazed and so excited and so engaged learning about the artwork. Then they bring their families back downtown and they share that excitement and that learning. Our goal with this program is that it will generate the next generation of art consumers and creators. Art can also have a profound economic impact on a community. Each year, the arts and culture sector contributes billions, with a B, billions of dollars to the national economy, and it creates millions of jobs. Because when people attend an arts or cultural event, not only do they buy tickets and merchandise and art, they stay in local hotels, they eat in local restaurants, they patronize local businesses, and so on. The economic ripple is amazing. So, are the arts an unnecessary luxury, something we can live without? I think it's worth reconsidering that perspective. Art also has a unique, intrinsic ability to uplift and heal. When we were in discussions about installing artwork at our local hospital, the first thing the chief administrator requested was that we install a sculpture in front of the emergency room, because people who come in there are really stressed out, and he knows that looking at lovely artwork soothes the soul. I can corroborate this. In 2019, we installed a beautiful sculpture called Ark of Peace in front of the Cancer Center. Now, I had never been inside that building before, although we had spent many hours outside the building on installation day. But less than a year later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And when I went for my first appointment, and I saw the words Cancer Center in enormous letters on the side of the building, 
I had a complete meltdown in the parking lot. But as my husband and I got closer to the building, and I saw that beautiful sculpture, somehow I felt compelled to go over and embrace it. And immediately I, I did feel comforted and much calmer. Truly, that beautiful piece of art had the ability to soothe my soul. And it did so for the next several months when I was undergoing all those treatments. And by the way, two years cancer-free. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, art is very, very subjective. We've had abundant praise for the wonderful, whimsical 12-foot metal dragon we installed, and a few people have had the opposite response. And that's totally fine, totally fine. We view all comments, positive and negative, as a really good thing, because they mean people are thinking about and engaging with the art on a very visceral level. And that brings the connective tissue of conversation. Finally, becoming an active community arts volunteer has been profoundly rewarding, especially when I can share that joy with my husband. When we see our community coalescing around an arts program, engaged and excited and happy, there's nothing better for both of us. A community that engages with and celebrates and appreciates the arts is a community that connects, and that just makes life better for everyone. It's a privilege and an honor to help expose people to the arts, just as I was exposed many years ago, <laughs> knowing that these treasures will have a lasting impact long after I'm gone. Thank, Thank you. you.